kind of email me to do. Thank you, Jay. Welcome to worship this morning, people of God here at Lake Edge on this beautiful Sunday morning. Our, uh, amen to that. Isn't that true? Thank you for joining us in worship online and here on our parking lot. Let us continue our worship service with our call to work at worship. Please stand as you are able. From God, you are never cut off. We are only pruned for good work. In Christ, we are connected. In the vine, we have our life. Jesus is our source of life now and yet to come. We are grafted to God and made whole in Christ. Ready our hearts, soak in the goodness of our Lord. We are ready to receive the goodness of God. Amen.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to the thirsty earth, like streams that revive our soul, like cups of water, water to be shared with the fresh. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in this resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy through Jesus Christ, your Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I give thanks for all the wonderful ministry that goes here at this church, this congregation, and all that we have been doing. Please find time to look through your bulletin and find ways to connect uh, with this congregation. Uh, we are continuing. This is a, um, a pastor's emergency fund day where we support that. So uh, there has been envelopes on the on the on the uh, table over there for that. Um, we're also continuing to drop off personal care kit donations, the bins right behind me, the highly fortified, beautiful bin. It's not a garbage container, no matter how much it might tell you that. It is for the gifts of God to the people of God, and our personal care donations are there for you to do that. Um, next week on this, uh, May 16th, I get officially installed as the pastor of this congregation at 930. Woo. Thank you for the woohoos. Mm -hmm. Be careful for what you wish for. You just <laughs> might get it. Um, and also, any of if you have any names, if you're graduates for this year, please get those in uh, to that phone number found on page 11. We are going to do a blessing here for an incredible, fruitful ministry that has happened during our COVID time. Uh, Jeff Miker, come on up. Come on up. Jeff Miker. Yes, yes. Uh, particularly during this COVID time, Jeff has been busy providing soup to the more homebound and isolated people of our congregation and people beyond. And we reached a milestone in the last few weeks of two tons worth of soup. One ton. Well, excuse me, one, one ton. ton one, ton one ton of soup. Right. One ton of soup. And um, I know you guys want more. They, they, we, you know you guys want more is what he has to say there. <laughs> And so we're going to say a quick blessing as you as you are, where you are, extend a hand to Jeff can I, here. Can I call somebody else up? Oh, um, oh, this whole thing just wasn't my, uh, this whole thing wasn't my idea. Uh, Denise was, uh, Hetrick was really behind this. I was making soup uh, years ago for shut-ins and Denise says, well, how about if we expand that a little bit? And uh, so, you know, how persuasive Denise can be. So I'd like to have Denise come up here as well. Like to recognize uh, the cooks and Sharon Krell. They're the ones that were behind a lot of the deliveries and the organization of this. So this just isn't uh, recognition to me. It's for all the people involved, everybody that made donations for uh, making of the soup. So um, I know Denise is happy to be up here. <laughs> so. Please, stand your, please extend your arm for uh, support here as we pray over this. Dear God, we give thanks for the abundant gift of food that you provide and that these servants of yours have done graciously the service of feeding the hungry and the isolated. We give thanks that you are a God who provides abundantly to your people. 
for Denise and Jeff and all the servants who have created our, ser uh, our soup train. We give thanks for this abundant life you've given us through these people. In your name we pray. Amen. And we have a little song to celebrate. So I was told, I heard from somebody, that when Jeff heard that he had baked, made an entire ton of soup, that he may have spent some of the afternoon singing one ton of soup to the tune of a well-known folk song. So I'm going to expand upon that a little bit for you, Jeff. One ton of soup. He made a one ton of soup. One ton of tasty soup. They cooked up one ton of tasty soup. They cooked a lot of chicken noodle. They cooked a tasty chicken wild rice. There was some yummy minestrone and maybe cream of potato. It became one ton of soup, yeah! They cooked up one ton of tasty soup. One ton of tasty soup. They cooked up one ton of tasty soup. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much, you guys. Add that to the list of songs I never thought I'd sing at church. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. That is not easy to follow. <laughs> Psalm 22 will be read responsively. I'll start from you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For the to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. The first reading is from 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us, but he is because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the father has sent his son as the savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have, we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also.
gospel is from John chapter 15, and Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I, as, as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in, I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Let the vineyard be fruitful, Lord, fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from seeds you've sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Now let the vineyard be fruitful, Lord, fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from seeds you've sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams Unite them with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence. Give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Now let the vineyard. Lord, fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from seeds you've sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life, that we may be fed with the bread of Thank you, Patrick. Well, come on. Let's... I, I went bike riding yesterday and hadn't biked ride in a long time. And, and I went, uh, I went for to take this turn and decided I was going a little fast. So I took the brake and I ended up doing the front brake instead of the back brake. And so I went flying over and I, I just landed right in this intersection and no one was there. No one saw this. And so whenever you fall, you always have that moment, right? We're like all systems check, you know, fingers working, everything's doing that. And the worst of the wear was my knee. I got a pretty bad scuffed knee and I crawled onto the, onto the, onto someone's yard there and I'm sitting there and an old adage from my dad came up. And I remember when I was a kid, I went to my dad and, after I was like, I had a boo-boo on my finger, I'd be like, oh, my finger. And my dad would be like, well, we'll just have to cut it off. <laughs> Anybody else have that ever? Or just my dad who has a bad sense of humor. And so I'm sitting on the, on, on the side of the road with my, and my bike's in the middle of the road. And I look at my knee and I went, well, I think we'll just have to cut it off. 
I was stubborn enough that I wanted to finish my bike ride. So I got on my bike, the, the back wheels wobbling like this. I'm trying to keep going. And, and after the endorphins got off, I realized I had to go home. But I'm well. This particular passage today is from the farewell discourse in John verse, uh, chapters 14 through 16. And it's seriously challenging this part, this combination of significant metaphors with a palpable mixture of promise and exhortation or praise and warnings have always prompted me to walk and preach a little gingerly when abiding in this particular part of John's gospel. It feels like John might have been writing to a community in pain struggling with their identity in relation to former friends and synagogue members and a host of losses and fears that were noticeably present, but yet really difficult to name. Hmm. I don't think we know what that means, huh? On top of this tough situation of the original context of this passage, in my opinion, it's been inappropriately used throughout many of the years as some form of weapon. A weapon for those who have been too easily cut off from the life of the church. One thing about Jesus' parables and illustrations that I try to make a point about every time is that we need to avoid a certain personification of Jesus' illustrations. Like in today's gospel, it is not our job to wonder who or what person of this age is that dead branch to be cut off. It is not our job to look at our neighbor and to think, hmm, is it them? Maybe they are this faithless dead weight of the vine. These stories and illustrations are not to be weaponized on our neighbors, to claim that they are somehow the enemy. Sometimes our faith is just way too quick to use Jesus' words as weapons against things in which we believe should be cut off in others. We must resist the false dichotomy that things are just easily categorized as good and good enough and bad, dead or prunable. This is just not the exercise that Jesus is inviting us into today. But one way the parables and illustrations like this are called to affect us is eternally. We don't have to look much further than ourselves to see things that just don't bear fruit. Things that just don't seem to do what God is hoping from us. Pragmatically, God is creative. God is reforming, seeking to make a difference and inviting change. You don't have to have a God that just lives on some vine or that makes the wine vi wild. If you see in this passage, the vine is either dead or pruned. There's not a third option of wild. And sometimes that's hard to see or hear as good news. Now, as a preacher, I'm always looking for the good news, the liberating force of the scripture. So where is the good news where you're either dead or pruned? Well, thanks for asking. As Lutherans, and I would say most Protestants, we generally believe that we are saints and sinners at the same time. And at all times, we are a sinner in need of redeeming and the saint who has been redeemed already. Clear as mud? Yeah, pretty much. Sometimes sin may be more obvious than others. Sometimes the saint is stronger than the sin. But if we live in reality, the saint in us is honest, an honest eye on the sinner in us. If you are someone whose saint has wrestled with your sin, a God who sees God's job to rid us of the dead weight that causes death, a pruning God for the sake of new life is good news. That, dear church, is good news. 
That, dear church, is liberating news. If you are fully aware that you need pruning, bring your shears, O God. Bring your shears, O God. And cut away and cut deep. Cut deep with your abiding mercy and grace. And God, leave none of that dead weight behind. And on the other hand, like many good, liberating things in the faith, sometimes the church takes things, well, the wrong direction. The church can get a little clipper happy now and then. If you've struggled with addiction and the church has cut when they're supposed to have pruned, on behalf of the church, I say I'm sorry. If you are a woman with so many pulpits and presidencies still out of reach and you still feel cut off, I'm sorry. If you are gay or lesbian and you've been told that you must cut that out, I'm sorry. If you've been cut by the church, by your race, then on behalf of the church, I am sorry. And in these ways, this church and the church universal has been just too quick to use its clippers under its own desires to prune and to cut off. Yet, as sometimes the church universal that's been too clippy here and there, we've also let a few things grow wild on the vine. You know, a vine from other sources that are not God's to grow wild from racism to sexism to homophobia and classism. We have too often let these vines grow wild and kill the dis disable the church from living into the purposely pruned state that we're called into. Those vines can choke out the life of the church. Those destructive vines the church universal has been slow to roll, slow to act. And on that, I say on behalf of the church, I'm sorry. So where do we go from here? How do we reconcile this sinner saint life? How do we understand our place on the vine? Well, that's it. We go back to the source. Of course we go back to the source. Over and over again, we go back to the vine, grafted back to life by God. A God who gives life on the vine. Back to the source in which we get life. And when we get this life on the vine, we understand that God's pruning is life-giving for us. And if it may not be life-giving for us, this pruning, it may be life-giving for our neighbor. That taking away the destructive behavior that we may have may be a good news to the people to come and our next door neighbors. That as we are pruned, we make a difference in society for the sake of the world and God's mission. Because pruning is life-giving. Life-giving for all. So what do we do as church? What do we do as church? As we, as we painfully sometimes accept the pruning of God is we confess. We confess and we shed. We are honest with ourselves and we act. We let go. We let go of that which dies in the presence of our Savior by the pruning shears of God. We let go and we kill those vines of systematic racism, sexism, and hillbilly as they fail in the presence of God before God's shears. 
And when we go from there and we come here, we go to the vine of love and mercy. The vine of growth and truth tended to by our God for the sake of our neighbor and for the sake of God's mission in the world. And sometimes my dad is right. We just got to cut it off. But he says it in a way in which I will grow and understand that the pain is just temporary and the growth is forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the faith we find in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring you our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruit, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church as it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You have created the heavens and the earth as we 
are in awe of that beauty of creation, may we work to keep this majestic place healthy and full of life. Hear us, O God, mercy is great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of this earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they have called to serve. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You have loved us, and that means we can love others. We pray for all those in need of love, for those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the need of all on our prayer list. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. O oh God, we pray for your refining spirit, your work that makes a more just world. We pray that we act against the sin in us and in the world. We pray that our work may be your will. Hear us, O God, oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare for the meal, you might want to get out your little communion that we were able to give to you. Two little things here. You can pull when you're when ready at the end, pull the bottom trigger to get the little piece of bread, the gluten-free bread. And at the during the, the bloodshed for you, pull the top off as well. Let us enter into our meal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give God thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. The Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespass. And we forgive those who trespass against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the blood, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Wellspring of joy. Through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now receive this blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Go in peace, share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.